He seems to referring to himself as the Son of Man, because he's the one who's going to be betrayed and killed. Though he oddly refers to himself in the third person. Have you guys, have you guys ever seen somebody refer to themselves in the third person? Craig's going to rehearsal tonight. Craig's going to have fun playing at rehearsal tonight. Craig's going to teach tomorrow. Like that's a weird thing to do, but whenever Jesus uses the Son of Man talk, he says the Son of Man does this, the Son of Man does that, rather than I. So, apparently, the Gospel of Mark thinks that Jesus will be the Son of Man as well. Though it's important to note that that's not the same as Messiah or Son of God. This is like a king. This is like someone with a divine heritage, and this is someone who's going to judge when the kingdom of God comes. Okay, the last thing about the uh, disciples being idiots. Chapter 10, verse 35. It's very similar to the last incident. Jackie, do you want to read this one? 1035 and forward. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they, they said to him, Grant us sit at one at your right hand and one at your left in glory. Okay, pause there. Wait, what are they asking you? Yeah. To sit right next to him? To sit at his right and his left. But before that, like they say, grant us a wish. Have you like ever had a friend come to you and so say, you, you have to promise that you're going to do what I ask you. And they say that before they actually tell you what they ask. <laughs> right? That's what they're doing. Like, Promise that you're going to grant us this wish. And he's like, well, what is it? <laughs> and what they're asking is to sit at his right and his left. What do you think he's talking, what, or what do you think James and John are talking about there? To sit in the middle. What's that? Like in heaven, like seated at the right hand. No, probably not that. In front of him? Or to his disciples? Well, maybe related to that. James. I was going to say, like, the, like his right hand man, like his best disciples. Yeah. If he's a typical Messiah, what's he going to be? And a king's got advisors who are very close to him, right? They're asking, can I be your vice president when you get to be king? One of us will get on the sit on your right, the other will get to sit on your left. We'll be second and third in command. The right hand side is second and the left hand side is third. It's kind of like when you... Uh, the Olympic podium, right? There's the number one is in the middle. And then is it is it two on the right? Is it silver on the right? And then bronze on the left, right? That's what they're asking. Jesus will be king, and one of them will get to be the second hand man, and one will be the third man. Can you keep reading? But Jesus said to them, "You do not know what you are asking. What you are asking." Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? Say to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink, and with the baptism baptism which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or my left is not mine. Right, so Jesus tells them, I cannot grant you that power. He says, do you want to go through what I'm going to go through? And they say yes, and he's like, okay, wish granted. You're going to get what I get. What's he going to get? No. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to suffer and die. That's what you're going to get. But I cannot promise you that you're going to get to be my vice president. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, all right, they, they went around behind the other disciples' back. Hey, Jesus, put us in front of these other losers. <laughs> and they get angry. 
Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be the first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life. King. Does a king serve or is a king served? Usually a king is served. People bring stuff to him. He says, as Messiah, I'm going to be doing the reverse. I'm going to be serving others. Which leads me to, we're starting to get the vision that Jesus is going to be a reverse Messiah of sorts. We're going to learn later on. Or maybe we did here. First will be last, last will be first. Whoever is a slave now is going to be tops in the kingdom of God. Whoever is on top now is going to be a slave in the kingdom of God. There's going to be a reversal in the society. If Jesus is going to be a Messiah, it's going to be a reverse Messiah. So that was the disciples. As you guys pointed out, they do get it later on. Like at the end of the book, they figure it out. But for most of the gospel, they're idiots and they have no idea what he's talking about. And they ask these absurd things that show that they don't understand that he's not going to be a typical Messiah. He's going to be a reverse Messiah. So let's get on to teaching on the law. Jesus gives teachings. I don't really want to say that much about this, but right Jesus is of what religious tradition? He's Jewish. And Jewish, Jews, Jewish. Jews uphold the Torah, the scriptures, the law. It says in the law, you've got to do these things as a Jewish person, as a follower of Yahweh. Well, it's no different for Jesus except that he reinterprets the laws in particular ways. Who else was reinterpreting the laws in particular ways at this time? The Pharisees. I want to suggest that Jesus is like the Pharisees in that he is reinterpreting the law. However, his reinterpretations are different from theirs. So it's not that he's opposed in principle to what the Pharisees are doing, it's just that his reinterpretation differs from their reinterpretation. Now, we see this uh, look at chapter 10, 10 verse 1. Chapter 10, verse 1. He left that place and went to the region of Judea and beyond the Jordan, and the crowds again gathered around him, and as was his custom, he again taught them. Some Pharisees came, and to test him they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? Oh, what does it say in the law about divorce? What? No. You can get divorced. As long as you get, uh, uh, the husband can divorce his wife, basically. The wife can't decide, but a husband can decide to divorce his wife. So he asked them, what does it say in the law? What did Moses command? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, beware of your hardness of, uh, uh, sorry, because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment of you. 
But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. This is a quotation from Genesis at the end of the Adam and Eve story. 